had a desire to be number one. I always had the desire to be the best. In order for you to succeed at anything, you gotta have a killer instinct. but nobody will lift no heavy ass weight all right guys i know you're all excited about news here we have mr a time olympia champion you guys it's not easy to win one of these awards is considered by everyone in any physique competition worldwide to be the most sought after title of all times you guys and we've got Eight-time Olympia champion here. He was considered the strongest Olympian as well. Loved by his peers, by the fans, the industry. No one ever had a bad word to say about this gentleman. I got to work with him numerous times for many years. I can consider him an honor to consider him a friend. And I'm so excited to have him here with me tonight on my first show, the Monica Brand Show. So, hi, Ronnie. Hey, uh, just excited to get to talk to you. And I know we got some fans on here that are, um, as they said, geeked out because of what we're doing here tonight. So I'm so excited to share all the good stuff. And I'm just curious, how are you doing tonight? And um, how are you doing mostly with this quarantine? Has it changed your um, day-to-day activities much? Not a whole lot. Uh, I The only thing I do now is Walk out back in my house for the gym instead of driving my, my car, to the house, which is about what seven, eight minutes to the gym. So <laughs> not too much pain, just a little, little extra time and getting to the gym now. A little yeah. extra time, man. You can't go. Are you? You're still over at Brian's gym or Metroflex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I've been working out for the last what thirty years now. 30 years. I've been up there, and uh, when you see Brian again, please tell him I send my best and say hello. I, I remember being up there at his gym and training and thinking, you know, I can handle the heat. And for whatever reason, for me outside on the track, I can handle heat. But in a gym setting with heat, <laughs> I'm not I'm not tough enough for that yet. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Takes some getting used to, right? And um, I'm so excited to have you on tonight, Ronnie, and be able to share. And I, you know, you have so many roles that you um, are. You are a son. You're a dad. You're a husband. You're a professional athlete, worldwide known, international. You're a cover model. Hey, you're a cover model, Ronnie. You ever thought about that? <laughs> oh, never. <laughs> just, just now. <laughs> <laughs> you are a cover model. I mean, that's pretty cool. I don't know if you've ever put that on your resume, but you know you can. <laughs> you're a cover no. model. Uh, and you're a businessman, too. I mean, you have multiple hats. How do you know which one to put on, when to put them on? Oh, when you've been around as long as I have and when you're as old as I have, I am, it comes pretty easy to you. You're <laughs> 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 young age. <laughs> The experience. Well, I've you know I've yeah. learned a lot about you and been around you enough to know that, you know, you are very passionate. You are very good to people, and you somehow get the job done in every area. So I have no doubt when it comes to family, you're a family man. When it comes to being, you know, the son that you're a son and um, take care of your family. So it's pretty um, honorable to get to visit with you. So. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your family. I know you have eight children, you said, right? Yeah, all together. We got eight. We have eight. Yeah, that is a lot of, um, that's a lot of people. Do you have um, a lot of children? Do you have one child that you feel has kind of followed in your footsteps that maybe even maybe young, you can kind of see a resemblance in, you know, how you've kind of patterned your life maybe at this point? No, it's kind of too early right now. Uh, 
My my uh, youngest is still five, then six, then eight, and I th- in here pretty soon. Are they any of them pick weights? Oh, they in here every day. <laughs> are there, uh, you have the little baby weights or the little colored weights for them? Are they all like yeah, big I guess metal I weights? I got some small weights in here too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you telling them that they got to lift heavy, right? Because you always told everyone they got to lift heavy. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want them tearing things up in here. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Well, I got, I've got to see a couple of their cute little faces and when we visited here, and they're super, super cute. So you might have some cover models coming out of, out of that. Maybe the girls will follow in your footsteps and become cover models. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. So, <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. So, um, speaking of family, I'd love to hear a little bit about how you were raised, and maybe um, you know, what do you feel like you you took from being um, you know raised by your family, like your parents? What do you feel you took from that childhood, and have you know made it a tradition to teach your children? Well, right now, when I was growing up. Things were a lot different. You know, I grew up in a real small town. We had about 15,000 people. Back then, you know, you didn't lock your car door, didn't lock your house or nothing. So Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little different being in the city. You know, I started working when I was nine years old. And I worked until I (laughs) pretty much graduated college. But, you know, nowadays, kids, they can't do all that. You know, so you got to pretty much keep them sheltered here and keep a close eye on them. You know, I know how Mm -hmm. bad it is. I was working for the police department for 15 years. I saw a lot of crazy stuff, and I know about all this crazy stuff going on. So you got to re- keep it real close to on your kids nowadays, so you can't let them out like like we were back in my day. So mm-hmm. for the most part, you know, they 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 do their school work, and then they do their little gym stuff. They skaters. I got three that skating right now. So they do their little workout there, and uh, of course, like I say, we got to take them everywhere they go. We got to take them to school. We got to take them. To Skate practice. <laughs> You're think, saying uh, skate? Uh, like, are you saying ice skate? Uh, yeah, ice skate. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's so, awesome. Uh, Beautiful sport. Yeah, it's different, you know, but they, they, they're, they're a lot different than I was. I, when I was that age, I didn't I didn't really know what I wanted to do. You know, it, it's kind of hard, too, because we didn't. They have sports like they have now, you know. The, the, my, my one started at three. You know, when, when I was three, <laughs> I don't even know what I was thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I know, you know, like they are now, you know. I, I got a six-year-old, seven-year-old, and a nine-year-old, all three skating right now. So Wow. They they. Almost- they have to practice a lot. It's it's pretty it's pretty complicated. It's pretty competitive too because they, they do competitions all over all over the state. You know, so okay. it's a lot of practice, you know, a, a lot of fees, and a, a lot of buying skates. <laughs> it's not a cheap sport. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> so do you so get to go? Do you get to your practices and and watch a lot, or is that is that something? to do on a regular basis when of course when the quarantine wasn't here yeah no they they get up at 5 a.m in the morning and do all that stuff and um, that's normal when i go to bed that's right <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, yeah, they're on their own with that mom takes some practice in school and all that and, you know, okay. by the time mom i do the rest i, I take i take over from there well i okay so with that in in mind with you saying that I'm curious about this time schedule you have of um, staying up all night is this something you've done your adult life or is this yeah. more recent can you explain that a little bit because you know. well I worked full time for the police department I worked from 3 to 11 so I had to get up and do my cardio before I went to work and do my workout before I went to work and when I got home it was always another cardio session so I'd stay up real late uh, back then, I do cardio. I got to eat and shower and all that stuff. And by the time I got to bed, it was always like four, five o'clock somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. So it's it's kind of like the same schedule for ever, ever. You know, pretty much my whole life. So I'm just sticking to it, pretty much. 
doing the same thing? Well, I understand. I know that I, in the past, when I was doing all of my, you know, training and competing, and if, if I was single, it was a lot easier. But um, staying up later sometimes, that was quiet time of the day, and I could get a lot more done. And then, of course, if you know, I lived by myself and was just training and traveling into my own thing, I could sleep whenever I needed to and get up and go train. And of course, that was my schedule a little bit too occasionally. It wasn't all the time, but it certainly helped. And then, you know, then I would have those occasional 30 in the morning trainings out there at Goldstone Venice. And that was, that was always uh, inspiring to have your workout done super early. So I get that. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> oh, wow. So um, I know you traveled an awful lot while you were competing and I'm, um, and as an athlete who did the same, I'm so curious, how um, how was that for you? Was it frustrating? Did you enjoy it? Um, and like trying to get your food there and um, how challenging was the part for you or was it easier than maybe? It wasn't hard, you know. <laughs> you make stuff hard on yourself when you just make it hard on yourself. For me, I've always made things easier for me. So it, it wasn't hard getting food. Uh, it wasn't hard to do the traveling. That was pretty easy. Uh, only, only, only hard thing about it was trying to schedule everything around my job and stuff I did, you know, at, at work. But for the most part, uh, once I got to a certain level, I was able to do what I wanted to do. So it was all, it was all pretty easy. It, it wasn't really nothing hard about it. Traveling, you know, after a while, you know, it gets to be what it is, like a like a job or something. So, right. Just expect it and go along with it, and it's not that bad, you know. Especially when you're in first class and you're all comfortable, and you can <laughs> sleep I, most, of the way, most of the way where you're going. So it's always been pretty easy for me. So even in first class, the seats were weren't too bad. No, not bad. I know you. I <laughs> know <laughs> uh, the airplanes can get squishy there, right? So, yeah, yeah. Um, do you have a favorite memory of, you know, one of the, maybe one of the countries you got to go? And I mean, I know when, when we travel as in, with guest appearance and you have promoters that would bring you out, you know, there's always maybe a few that were really, really super fun and some that were just like, okay, but do you have a, a memory of maybe one of the countries that you just really enjoyed your time and the people and felt like it was such a memorable experience that it sticks in your mind? Um, see, my favorite places was always places like uh, Australia, Brazil, uh, well, uh, Colombia was will always pretty nice to wait. I had a lot of favorite places that I like going to, you know. Uh, most of the time, uh, the fans were like off the chain just about everywhere you went, you know. Cause it's not like here, you know, they sit all the time here, but when you go overseas, it's like a novelty where they only get a chance to see us maybe every two or three years or something like that. Sometimes it's been like maybe 10 years since you've been to some of these countries. So traveling has always been good to me. I've always been great. I've always enjoyed meeting the fans all over the place. And uh, I've always had my favorite favorite place to go. And after a while, quite a few of those became favorites because I was always being treated so warmly, so nicely. So I just look forward to going to a lot of different places. You probably went over to Tony Dottery's gym a lot in Australia, right? Was he in Melbourne, I think? Did he bring you out there a lot? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember the gym is so interesting. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. I, I love Tony's gym. I assume they still have that same gym under, it's kind of underneath the ground and yep. got all those different uh, rooms. Yep, yeah, it's a it. cool place. <laughs> I'll just, just, so I, I, um, I've got, we've got some questions over here and I know um, everyone's talked to you. I, I know we've got somebody interested in how you're doing, how your back is. So, do you feel like uh, sharing a little bit about, you know, where you are right now and um, how you're doing? Because all the fans are wanting to know, Ronnie. Yeah, yeah. Everything's going pretty good for me now. Um, 
had my last back surgery about two years ago. It'll be two years in September anyway. Uh, they put all the screws in. Uh, screws that were going bad and they were breaking and they had to be redone. So I had them all, all redone. They put in some rods. This is just my last surgery. And uh, ever since then, everything's been going really good because it's like it's a new time. Uh, and for, for a minute there, I was having surgery like every three or four months going to this mm. one doctor because every time they put the screws in and they, they would break. And every time they break, they had to place them right away. So I finally got away from that doctor and went to another one. And the, and the last doctor, he uh, put, you know, he replaced all the screws, put, like they put in some cages, put in some rods, and everything has been good ever since then. I hadn't had anything go wrong in two years since mm. I got the new doctor. Praise God. So you, is it is it right, did I get the um, years right, that your first rupture was your back, and that was in 96, or was 97? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and yeah, then yeah. you... <laughs> December. <laughs> and then right out, was it after that when you squatted that 800 pounds, or was it before that? Well, see, uh, I herniated my disc in, like... 96, almost 97. Uh, I, I did the squat 03. So that was what, probably about five years later. Oh my goodness. How, how, how do you do that? How do you have, how do you have a back like that? <laughs> and then still be able to squat like that? I mean, you have to put 800 pounds on your back. <laughs> but it, it still heals up though, you know. Because I, I did lift it uh, 800 for, for a couple of reps uh, a couple of years later after that radiation. So that was one. So the squat was 03. So, you know, everything heals up and gets better. And uh, you get strong and get stronger and stronger. As long as you're working out, Telling you yourself know, it's just staying, staying ahead of everything, it's all good. And that's why, you know, of course I did that. Getting ready for all those Olympians and all that kind of stuff. I had to stay in the gym all the time. You had to keep that strongest Olympia reputation, right? So, well, <laughs> well that's the last yeah. thing you think about. Yeah. <laughs> I know you, you're just, you've just got it in your mind that you want to be the best at everything you do. So I'm giving you a hard time there teasing you. But <laughs> so do you feel like squatting or deadlifting that kind of weight was harder, if you even can say it was harder than the other for you? Well, <laughs> I tell people this all the time. Uh, deadlifting 800 pounds and squatting 800 pounds is two different things. When you deadlifting, you're pulling from the floor, and what's right there on the floor, gravity pulling right against you. Uh, when you're squatting, it, it's way up on your shoulder, and gravity is way down there on the ground, so you it's, things are a lot lighter. That's why. When I squatted 800 and I did two, and I'm like, oh man, I could have got five more. I mean, three more, three or four more. I was thinking, I had forgot about the gravity thing, you know. I didn't take it into account. Never, but I had never, I took account out of, out of <laughs> the other two. So when you did the two, was that the goal? Was just, I'm just going for two? Exactly. Well, I knew uh -huh. I had done, done it on the deadlift, and it wasn't, it was. It was, it was heavy, but it, it, wasn't that, it wasn't that heavy. <laughs> I don't know about that. It's like a baby elephant or something. I don't even know. <laughs> it's awesome. That's so exciting. I, was, I only lifted for me for a short while when I was running um, track and doing the sprinting. And I really actually started loving that training. And that is how I got ready for my last few shows. I was actually training for track and not figure or whatever so it was it was a lot of fun i was only in the gym twice a, twice a week and on the track five times a week it was it was really awesome and i saw great results so i know you were a track person growing up as well as football so do you have um you have any, uh thoughts as if you were not a bodybuilder if you could go back in time and do one over and pursue one of those which one do you think you would have wanted to pursue uh, I didn't really care too much about it. I was just doing the field events anyway, so my only other thing was playing football, you know, 
I could have pursued that a little bit further if I had wanted to, but I kind of gave up because I had a lot of injuries in college and I was tired of getting injured all the time. Since I didn't get drafted, I didn't want to go out there and get injured and just be miserable. So I just decided against it. And so I had my degree in accounting and I uh, graduated at such a high level, I figured I'd take my chances there. Now you were you were pretty um, diligent, I guess, in your your schoolwork, which is yeah. you know I don't know if that's something that somebody thinks about when they're like, oh, Mr. Olympia, eight time and strongest man. I mean, I you know you kind of tend to forget maybe there was somebody in there that likes to learn and study, and I think that's really remarkable. Um, do you have anything currently that you like to read or study or learn about for like the brain? In power? Not really. Not like I did back in the day. Back then, you know, I was always looking to learn as much information as I could about just about everything. You know, now I got a lot older because I don't have those dreams and aspirations I did like I did back in those days. But so I don't I don't do a I do I don't do a whole lot of reading. I just do a little bit here and there, you know. Uh I don't really miss school that much because uh, back in those days, I was, I was like you said, I was studying pretty hard. I was uh, studying every single night, and the subject, subject I decided to take up was, was complicated in a way, but if you studied hard, uh, it came kind of easy. Right. And I studied pretty hard every night. That, that's so awesome. You know, that's really good to hear, and I hope that the young people that are watching maybe that have aspirations to be a top bodybuilder will keep that in mind too because it's really amazing to be able to look back after all you've done as a professional and as an athlete to say you know that was something that you know you strived as well in and you were diligent in that just as you were diligent in your you know your bodybuilding and sports you know um ideas so i you know ronnie i've got a couple questions over here let me look real quick because i think there's one i wanted to get to um, where was the one? I think it's higher. I'm sorry. I've got people here helping me out. Uh, let's see. Greeting. All right. Here you go, Ronnie. Greetings from Iraq. Could you please ask Ronnie why he is not continue his glory and going to be a coach? And why does he not train those who want to train under his supervision? Yeah. Uh, coaching stuff is not for me. <laughs> 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 when I do coaching and when I do stuff. So I don't know if anybody can you know, uh, meet my level of my, my, my standards. But I'm, I'm pretty rough, so. <laughs> uh, if you're not doing it the way I, I do, and I get bored real quick. <laughs> yeah, if someone's not inspiring you, I'm sure. So you're saying if I want to compete again, you're not going to help me out. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Let me see. We've got thanks for the question, by the way. I'm going to not probably say your name correctly, but uh, thank you there from Iraq. Uh, okay, Ronnie. Uh, let's see. Ronnie or Monica, what do you think about having bodybuilding competition through technologies like Zoom until this COVID 19 is over? From Jay. Hi, Jay. What do you yeah. think? about that which is kind of an interesting question because my husband is in the horse industry and they are actually doing online horse shows so people are doing a pattern and then sending it into wow. the the people that are hosting this online show and it's been huge success so yeah that's a great question what do you think what do you think ronnie i don't know it's just so difficult for me to even go there because i'm so used to doing it one way, and it just, it just don't seem like, like it would work another way. I guess I did it that, that one way for so long, just even thinking about doing it another way, I can't wrap my head around it, because I don't <laughs> see how it would work. Well, it would, I think it would be um, hard, because the lighting for bodybuilding is so specific, and if you don't have good lighting, just period, you can't really see the definition. You can't see, you know, the, how the symmetry looks. So I think it would, it would be really hard because it's such a, you know, a physique 
competition. So it depends. You know, you might have someone that has a great physique, but they don't have the best um, video or lighting, and then you know they just can't come across as well. So, but it's kind of an interesting um, idea, I guess. <laughs> <Very interesting. laughs> yeah. So I got a question for you. Um, how many years were you at the Arnold, and how many years at the Olympia were you? And do you have a do you prefer one of those shows over the other? See, yeah, I don't do the Arnold like twice. Uh, I won in uh, 01 and I got fourth in 97. Uh, the Olympia is a more, you know, well known, respectable event that's pretty for the best of, you know, in the world. It's like a Super Bowl. So you got mm -hmm. the Super Bowl and you got your maybe like your just secondary Super Bowl with the Arnold Classic. So right. everybody's always out to, you know, you know, win that big title, get that big time recognition by being, being world champion, you know. Mm -hmm. So Olympia's always, always been my, been my, my contest to go to. But Arnold is a, is a good show too, even though right. I did it twice. You know, it's still a great show. How how well do you know Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger? Well, I've done a lot of appearances with him, so I know him pretty well. You know, he's done appearances here in Dallas and. I joined him on some of those, and then I've done a lot of his shows all around the, the world. He joined me in, in a lot of those, so we're, we're, we're pretty cool. We're pretty, pretty tight. He's a real nice guy. He just he just is basically one of the guys, basically. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, have you been? Have you seen it? Have you seen any of his um, Instagram stuff with his two little miniature animals? He got a donkey and a miniature horse in his house. Yeah, of course. <laughs> That's honorable. for you. <laughs> <laughs> They're so cute. I love them. I'm like, I haven't asked my husband for one yet, but I'm tempted. <laughs> and I really want to hear the little donkey when they make their, their precious little noise. Cause I think that would be really cute. But anyways, that's yeah. fun. So, yeah. So speaking of, um, you have your own show that you've been running. I think you said 23 years, years, the Ron Coleman classic. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh -huh. A lot of years. Um, okay. And have you had Arnold there to make an appearance by chance? No, not really. Uh, we haven't had a lot of guys make appearances there lately. Uh, we are uh, we are uh, mostly just been operating it locally, you know, for the most part. Okay. Well, I know you, I've heard for years people, you know, loving your show and excited to go compete there. So congrats on having that run for so many years. I had one for six years and, you know, that was a lot of work, but it was certainly fun. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. So, okay. You, um, you and I got to work together at BSN and um, that was a really special couple years for me there how long were you actually at bsn um as an endorsed athlete uh see oh five to like 11 uh i'm there for like six seven years somewhere in there okay uh, I, was there, I was there for quite a while we, uh, they were there. true yeah it was nice yeah i enjoyed, they were enjoyed it fun I did too. You know, I don't know if you realize I um I called up Scott James and told him he needed a female athlete because you were working for him and I'd been with Universal Nutrition for seven years and I was like kind of like ready for something different and I realized I had kind of looked at BSN and I thought, I don't have any female athletes. I gotta have a female athlete. So I had a friend that gave me Scott James's number and I just called and he got on the phone and I said, This is Monica Brandt and he's like, What? For real? I'm like, yeah, for real. And he was like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And I was like, well, I just call him basically because I saw you have Ronnie Coleman, but you need a female athlete, right? <laughs> I was trying to get myself a contract. I was their first, their first female, and it was always fun because you know friends would come over in my line, and then they'd be like, oh, can you get me over there to Ronnie Coleman? And I'm like, okay, probably. <laughs> it was always fun to work with you, and you know, I just always admired your your patience because. Hey, you know, for the competitions that I did, you know, I had to be a certain way, but nothing like, you know, the level of 
um, dryness and food and all of that that you guys had to do. And I um, always admired the your attitude towards the fans and how gracious you always were and, you know, thoughtful of everybody. So it's fun to see how many people love you and, and that you've, you've had such a, you've made such a great name, not just for yourself, but for the industry worldwide. And, you know, people can come to the bodybuilding and kind of like, you, you know, Oh, it's so everyone's so big and muscle. And I'm like, Hey, there are some amazing people in this industry. And why do we stay in it for so long? You know, it's, it's got, a lot of great people that you become friends with that you're inspired by. And I just, you know, before we go on, I want, I just felt to share that with you and, and just from the bottom of my heart, you know, I might cry. I'm a tear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, well, this is my life. <laughs> you know, you've done, you've done, um, um, you know, this is one of the reasons I wanted to start this show. I wanted to honor the people, um, the, the, so the legendary bodybuilding fitness icons, I wanted to honor you guys and you being, you know, such a legendary icon. I wanted to honor you guys and um, allow some of my fans to get to know you a little bit and, and be able to talk. And it's such an honor to, you know, call you a friend, too. So, um, you, know, you know, one of the other things I always like to say is, hey, me and Ronnie got the our first uh, Olympia titles that's, well, I only got one, but you know, we got them on. The, we won the same year, '98. Yeah. When I've got, I got mine. It's kind of fun. And um, for a long time, I never had my um, covers up. I never had my uh, Olympia um, medals up. And we moved into this house about two years ago, and my husband started little by little doing some you know some special little projects in here for me just to have the memory of what all i've done and it's yeah. it's fun i know you have a really special room as well and uh, yeah. all of your yeah. awards and you know you've got tons of them so it's it's fun do you have yeah. your covers up too or just your awards i have covers up just like you do <laughs> that's awesome all right ronnie yeah. i think we're gonna <laughs> I want to, I'm um, going to change this up a little bit. We're going to go to our rapid fire question. So I'm going to ask you a question. Your first thing that comes to mind. Okay. okay. Oh yeah. And Ronnie, you guys, Ronnie doesn't know any of these questions. So um, some of them might be easy for him and some of them might be, you know, a little more thought provoking. <laughs> Uh, honey? <laughs> All right. Favorite fish that you used to catch? Catfish. Catfish? I, I, yeah, I do that all the time. But, you know, I That's think it's awesome. I try to go as um, much as I can. The what? I try to go as much as I can still today. I used to go every day when I was a kid. Uh, do you have a place you can go fishing near you? Uh, no, not near me now. I have to drive a couple hours to go to where I want to go. Okay, okay. All right, these are supposed to be rapid, and I know I started talking. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Favorite body part, upper and lower to train? Uh, upper is probably going to be chest, and lower is probably going to be legs. All right. Uh, quads or hamstrings? Uh, quads, yeah. <laughs> All right. Least favorite upper and lower muscle group to train? train. Well, see, I don't have any of those. Uh, I thought you might say that, but I had to ask. <laughs> 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 All right. For 43 years, you kind of look forward to it. To all of yeah. it, right? Yeah. Even the triceps. All right. Least uh, least favorite thing about competitions? Diet. <laughs> Diet. I, I with a passion. <laughs> uh, I think that's probably true for just about, hey, the first three, the first three letters are spelled die, right? Like, it's kind of crazy. Well, uh, I, yeah. I think if they didn't have the commercials on TV yet, so much. It's the commercials that get me while I'm on the diet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. When you when you saw a commercial, could you actually smell it too? Well, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I was always smelling. 
Uh, I, uh, I'm sorry, I lost you there. I, I didn't normally want that food until I couldn't have it, you know. <laughs> not, 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 I don't, none of that stuff. Uh, that's how it works, though, for everyone, I think, a little bit. All right. <laughs> All right. Here's a hard one for you. Your favorite color? Uh, blue. Blue. Very yeah, good. That's a win, winning color. A lot of blue cars. Okay. Uh, dark blue or light blue? Mm, dark blue. Okay. That's yeah. good. All right. Um, I know you uh, talked in, the, in some of your other um, interviews about your memory. You have a good memory. And I'm curious, how many old phone numbers do you remember that you've had? <laughs> Just about all of them. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's I awesome. County guys remember that. I could, <laughs> I could memorize the number. I remember the, the first number I first got as my uh, as a kid. Uh, one more. Okay, favorite holiday I think on this on this because it's supposed to be rapid and I'm making it slow. <laughs> Favorite holiday? Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. All right. Is it giving giving presents or getting presents? <laughs> giving. No more. Giving. <laughs> With all these kids. Yeah, a lot of presents, sir. And then you've got grandbabies, too. Exactly. All right. So I, I wanted to ask ask you a little bit you know i'm a faith-filled girl and my faith is is very important to me i've got a hope hope uh faith hope and love tattoo on my foot and you know i know that the lord has been very good to me and has taught me a lot and i'm very blessed but i know a lot i do a lot of i do a lot of praying and reading scripture and just wondered um who taught you about faith and um how has that maybe impact your life do you feel Knowing, knowing who God is and having, having faith. Well, we grew up like that, you know. When I was a kid, and we had to go to Sunday school every Sunday. We had to go to church every Sunday. Then we had to do the speeches every Easter. We had to do the, the Christmas program every Christmas. So I grew up in the church, and uh, you know, just stayed with me my whole entire life. You know, so I've always had a real strong faith, and God has always been way too good to me, and overly good. And I uh, always got everything I wanted for the most part. Uh, nothing uh, I don't have, I, I don't want and don't have it. Last thing I wanted was uh, a Rolls Royce. And that was my last <laughs> gift to myself. Uh, so I don't have anything else that I don't want. I, I got everything I ever wanted and need now. Aww. That's awesome. That's awesome. Would, and are there any traditions that you want your children to grow up knowing about, learning from maybe your family or how you grew up or anything that you feel is important that you really try to uh, press into your children that you have and your grandkids maybe as they get older? Yeah, I want them to grow up pretty much just like I did, you know, being in the church and going to church all the time, having faith in God, believing in God. You know, there is a God that you cares for all of us and does for all of us. And I just want to uh, pretty much be the same way I am. Because, uh, you know, if you believe, it will come true. It will happen. Everything I've always believed in always happened. Always. Well, the scripture... I had everything I ever wanted and needed from faith and believing in God. I love that. You know, the scripture says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And I, I know people always want to go, well, God's supposed to give yeah. me the desires of my heart, but we're supposed to, you know, believe and receive and, and pray and keep a relationship with God. And it sounds like that's what you've lived by and God honors okay. your hard work, your diligence. And it's awesome. I've done that my whole entire life. <laughs> well, and it shows the other scripture comes to mind. It says that, uh, Jesus told his disciples that that people would know that they are his disciples by how they loved others. And I think it shows with you 
how you care and you love others and people feel. And that's one of the reasons that people just just about your Olympia win, you know, that's a part of you, but it's how you've treated people for years and it comes across and, and it's, um, it's, it's really beautiful. If I can say that you're Johnny. (laughs) Hey, I, I I just, I wanted, I'm sorry, Ronnie. Uh I didn't mean mean to cut you off, but it was hearing a little choppy there. Oh, that's okay. So, um, I do remember a couple of times I had asked you to do a, a little um, video for my my girlfriend's son who survived leukemia, and he was a huge fan of yours. His name was Walker. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. He sent me. A, they've been on tonight, his mom and dad. I haven't. Li- I think they're still on. Uh, yep, I see. I see his mom, and I think his dad was on. I'm not sure. Maybe Walker was on too. But, anyways, they were watching, and I know they're big fans, and you. Were you really uh, made their son extremely happy, which as you as a father know that that's a blessing as a parent to know how happy your child was. So just want to let you know they're on here and support and oh. saying hi and all that. <laughs> oh, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I, I think the last thing I want to ask you, Ronnie, is what advice do you have? Um, and I'm sure everyone likes to ask you for advice, but what advice do you have um, for, for people that are looking to come into this industry, maybe they uh, as aspiring to be uh, Mr. Olympia at some point, they hope and dream. What would you, you know, I'm sure you have some great advice. So what would you, what would you, what would you share to that aspiring athlete? Well, it's pretty easy right there. Um, coming into the sport, you know, I, I never really wanted to be a bodybuilder, but uh, I found out as time went on that, the more knowledge you have, the better off you're going to be. So I learned from a lot of knowledgeable people. Uh, that's that's the reason why I was able to go on and win those eight Mr. Olympics. So the people I had in my court, the people that trained me and, and taught me. So I always try to tell people try, try, find the find the person who's most knowledgeable, who's the most knowledgeable person you know about the sport. And you will know that by their accomplishments. Uh, and 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 learn as much as you possibly can from that person. Because that's what it's all about. Knowledge is pretty much power. And the more you have, the better off you're going to be. That's right. And I remember your interview where you talked about asking Kevin. <laughs> and he gave you the, the vodka pizza <laughs> information. Yeah. I just cracked up at that. Because, I mean, as, a, as an athlete, you understand how that could work. But it sounds kind of so strange to someone that probably doesn't know about you know having to be dry and then put some kind of carbs in and relax i mean <laughs> it's awesome i'm sorry you know, it broke up for me what did you say i said it was actually vodka and coffee kevin gave to me okay <laughs> right. that's awesome Oh, Kevin. At the time, Kevin. I didn't like coffee. Oh, you didn't like coffee at the time? Or oh, vodka. Or vodka, right. Did you put your vodka in your coffee? <laughs> yeah, that's what he did and you, when he gave it to me to drink. So did, did that end up to be your go-to for the next few you know, years of showing competitions? No. That was the last time I did that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> I and coffee <laughs> with a passion. <laughs> I've never liked coffee. I, some of it, I like the smell of it, but I uh, certainly don't drink it. I, I'm looking over here at the notes, and Walker is on tonight, and he says, yeah, Ronnie, you're the man. <laughs> that's the young gentleman that you gave that you sent that video for. So I know he's smiling probably ear to ear right now if we could see him. But um, I just want to check out to see if I have any other. Um, thank you, Nick Nicholas. Ruiz says two icons and champions. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> any other questions that we want to ask you before we let you go back to your night? I don't yeah, see any. Is- them out. Yeah, they're probably they're probably ready for you to come on and be a dad and put your dad hat on. And I just have to say, you know, I was a little bit jealous tonight that 
I was trying to put these headphones on around all my hair and it just wasn't very comfortable. And I was like, I feel a little claustrophobic with these on. And, you know, if you put them on, you don't have to worry about your hair. So I was a little jealous that, you know, it'd be so easy for you. But hey, Ronnie, thank you so much for coming on tonight and spending that time with us. And I really, really appreciate it. I'm praying for you, your family, your success. You guys go check out RonnieColeman.net. You can see all about Ronnie's signature line um, book. You guys check it out. Uh, interviews, his documentary, The King, Ronnie Coleman. Thank you so much, Ronnie. I hope you have a really blessed night and look forward to catching up with you soon. You know it. Thank you. Hey guys, if you've enjoyed the Monica Brand Show, don't forget to subscribe, ring that bell, and if you have any ideas or suggestions for the show, comment below and I'm happy to get back to you.